Five Important Lessons Young People Should Learn from David Tepper David Allen Tepper was born on the 11th of September 1957 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and is the founder and president of Global Hedge Fund, Apaloza Management, based in Miami Beach, Florida. Tepper owns the Carolina Panthers of the National Football League, NFL, and was ranked on Forbes listings as the 138th wealthiest person in the world as at the 30th of November 2018, with an estimated net worth of about $11.4 billion. So how did David Allen Tepper become this rich? And what can young people learn from him? In this video, we will share with you five important lessons young people should learn from David Allen Tepper. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Lesson 1. Be enthusiastic. Tepper worked at the Frick's Fine Arts Library as a means to help pay his way through school while he attended the University of Pittsburgh. While in college, Tepper also began investing, small scale, in a variety of markets. Tepper's first two investments, Pennsylvania Engineering Corporation and Career Academics, were given to him by his father, and both companies went bankrupt. Tepper graduated with honors, earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics. After his college graduation, Tepper started working in the finance industry as a credit analyst in the Treasury Department of Equibank. Unsatisfied with his position in the industry, which was limited by his academic qualification, Tepper enrolled at Carnegie Mellon University's Business School in 1980, where he received a Master of Science in Industrial Administration MSIA, degree upon completion. After obtaining his MBA equivalent, Tepper gained higher profile employment and went on to become a legendary investor and hedge fund manager. The lesson for young people Ambition and enthusiasm are what will drive you to achieve greater things. Tepa was unsatisfied with his position and enrolled for higher education and qualification, realizing it was essential for him if he was to reach higher ranks quickly in the finance industry. Ambition is not just about wanting more. It includes the action that brings you closer to the realization of your goal. First, don't be satisfied with mediocrity. Visualize your next level, then continue to take positive action that draws you closer to your vision. Lesson 2. Have a niche and be clever. After obtaining his MBA equivalent from Carnegie Mellon University in 1982, Tepper accepted a position at Republic Steel in Ohio. Tepper worked in the Treasury Department until he was recruited in 1984 to Boston-based Keystone Mutual Funds, now part of Evergreen Funds. In 1985, Tepper joined Goldman Sachs as a credit analyst. At the time, the company was forming its high-yield group in New York and he became head trader within six months focusing on special situations and bankruptcies. After the 1987 market crash, Tepper bought underlying bonds in financial institutions that had been significantly affected by the crash for a pittance. These bonds shot high in value once the market recovered, and because of that, he is credited with playing a major role in the survival of Goldman Sachs during that period. The Lesson for Young People it is better to be exceptionally skilled at one productive thing than to be moderately skilled at a handful of things. David Tepper focused on bankruptcies and companies with special credit situations. This is not to discredit versatility, but to encourage effective and efficient use of one's most valuable resource, time. In addition, you need to be clever in your decision-making where you find yourself as Tepper did. Lesson 3. Know when to quit. Tepper remained at Goldman Sachs for 8 years after he became a head trader. After his miracle turn over following the market crash of 1987, Tepper assumed he would be made a partner at Goldman Sachs. However, he was passed over twice in 2 years. 
Tepper was passed over partly because his loud and profane manner did not agree with the other more conservative Goldman executives. After being passed over the second time, Tepper quit Goldman Sachs in December 1992. This decision would eventually lead him to become a billionaire. The lesson for young people When in Rome, do as the Romans do is a very popular saying referring to your ability to blend into an environment. It means you hope to thrive in a place of culture. You must adopt that culture in order to utilize it as a tool. But does this really work in all cases? While in some cases, you need to blend in in order to succeed, but in other cases, it may not be you that needs to change. It's the environment you find yourself in. If you can't fix it, leave it. Know when to quit a path if it will not lead you towards your desired success. Lesson 4. Don't sulk, press on. After Tepa quit Goldman Sachs in 1992, he started operating from a desk in one of the offices of Michael Price, who was a mutual fund manager and a Goldman client at the time. Tepa aggressively traded his personal account, hoping to raise enough capital to start his own fund. Early in 1993, he co-founded Apaloza Management LP with former Goldman Sachs colleague Jack Walton and has continued to make significant gains year after year by bringing his specialty to bear and making dicey investments that repeatedly shocked the market. Apaloza's first investment was in Algoma Steel, a distressed steel company at the time. Tepa bought the shares for $0.20 and sold within a year for $0.70. Apaloza management started with $57 million in capital, returning 57% on its asset within the first six months. In 1994, the fund grew to $300 million, then $450 million in 1995 and $800 million in 1996. In 2001, Tepa generated a 61% return by focusing on distressed bonds. According to New York Times, Tepa became the top earning hedge fund manager in 2009 when Apaloza Management earned roughly $7 billion, profiting from the recovery of institutions whose distressed financial stocks he had purchased early in the year. By 2014, Apaloza's assets under management were upward of $20 billion. The lesson for young people Life a lot of times is unfair. Why gripe about it? After he quit, Tepa immediately and aggressively struck out to satisfy his ambition. Time is a resource, don't waste it on what ifs. Sometimes, an established avenue may not get you where you need to go. Develop a mindset to create your own avenues if or when you need to and wealth will be yours for the taking. Lesson 5. Be wary of greed Apaloza repeatedly returned capital on investors over the years. When there was an excess return, Tepa gave it back to his investors. In 2016, he returned 20% of his investor capital Tepper believed investment should be made based on facts without sentiment. When asked by a reporter about the source of his confidence, Tepper said, I was never afraid to go back to Pittsburgh and work in the steel mills. The lesson for young people Tepper shows restraint in not letting his ambition exceed his capacity. When there was an excess in funds, he did not pocket the money. He practiced a transparent business and his investors never lost trust in him. Don't get greedy. In conclusion, if you are a young person and you want to be rich and successful in life, be enthusiastic about your dreams and that desire will get you there. Find your strength, polish them and make clever decisions in times of crisis. If you repeatedly hit a wall in your quest to success, there are times when it's safe to quit and choose a different path. No matter the choice you make, keep moving forward. And lastly, don't get greedy. No one wants to invest in a selfish person. Thank you for watching our videos. 
we'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we unpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.